So I've ordered a brand new MacBook Pro and it's got M1 Max inside, but why did I order that chip? Hi there guys, welcome back, it's me David. And if you're brand new to the channel, it might be worth subscribing and you can do that right now. And don't forget to turn on all notifications and if you've been with me before, welcome back. So as I mentioned on the intro, I have just ordered a brand new MacBook Pro with M1 Max inside of it. And although these computers aren't new, of course, they were released at the last event of 2021 in November, I thought the process of why I chose an M1 Max may be of interest to you if you were sitting there thinking about buying yourself a new Mac. I've had quite a number of Macs over the years. I started off with a MacBook Air, then I went into my first 21.5 inch iMac from back in 2011, I believe. And since then, I've bought the 27 inch iMac you can see behind me there. There's another 21 and a half inch iMac behind me in the other corner of the studio. And I've had a couple of MacBook Pros as well. But as my work has changed, my workflow has changed, I've noticed that the machines that I'm currently editing on, and my main machine is the 27 inch here, and I do a little bit of work also on the 2019 MacBook Pro that I've got. I've noticed I'm beginning just to creak at the seams, just a little bit, just slowing down. And I knew as soon as I started getting to video editing that really I was gonna have to think about making a change. So it's been a long time coming. I haven't bought anything new for editing on off my business, which is in graphic design for a long, long time. And I didn't wanna make a mistake. So I've taken a lot of time in seeing what's out there, looking at all the different options, and finally coming to the conclusion that what I've chosen, I believe to be right. And it may just be interesting to see if that fits in or resonates with you, depending on what sort of work you're doing, and if you're looking to buy a Mac, maybe this video will help you. So I began getting serious about changing Macs sometime during the course of last year, after Apple Silicon was first announced. Apple Silicon and M1 was first put inside of the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air, and it's particularly the MacBook Air that got my attention. That machine is a thousand pounds. It's about 3,000 pounds less than this iMac when I bought it, and it was running rings around it. By everything I was seeing on YouTube and all the videos, Everyone was saying it is just ridiculously powerful with such a, well, it's, it's a tiny little notebook, really. It's a glorified notebook, and yet super, super powerful. It doesn't even have a fan inside of it, and I've got so fed up of fans, so fed up of fans, I can't tell you. So I thought, okay, that's where they're starting. Then went into the iMac, the 24-inch iMac. That got a bit of interest for me as well, because I thought, okay, now we're getting into a bigger screen size. I've always liked the idea of a bigger screen, the kind of work I do, video editing and graphic design tends to need more real estate to work on. So once they had the iMac out, yeah, I was getting interested, still had the M1 in. I knew it'd be better than anything I had currently, but I thought, you know what? I think they've got plans for this chip. Just sit tight for the year and wait to see where they go. And I wasn't wrong, was I? Right towards the end of the year, of course, they come out with the M1 Max and the M1 Pro chips and put them into the MacBook Pros, which is the route I've decided to go. I think anything after this is almost gonna be a law of diminishing returns. I'm sure that there's clearly going to be the M2 chip, and obviously we're expecting some iteration, probably of M1, I'm guessing, inside of the Mac Pro that's still to come. But I'm not going to need anything like that power. I've chosen the M1 Max, and even that, I think, is going to exceed what I need. But there were reasons behind going that direction on buying that particular chip in the MacBook Pro, which I'm going to explain to you in just a short while's time. So I watched the, the development of M1 through the course of last year and then into this year, once I saw that they got to M1 Ultra, I thought, right, at that point, anything that happens now is going to be beyond what I need. And I'm a reasonably heavy user, but looking at that M1 Ultra chip, it's beyond what I need. So I thought this is a good time to buy it. Also, I'd always wanted a display to go with it. So I was in a perfect position now where Apple had everything that I needed to make some choices. And then it was down to making those choices. Now, funny enough, I've always been an advocate of desktop machines. That's why I bought the iMacs, the 221 and a half inch iMacs and the 27 inch you can see there. And that machine there has been responsible for so much work over the six years that it's been with me. Super lol, never let me down. It's been a great, great machine. It's gonna be a sad day when I'm not using it anymore, but I think you'll still see it in the videos. It'll just shuffle along and I'll find somewhere for that one to go. <laughs> not quite sure where yet. But uh, I knew a change needed to come and I decided that after the pandemic, my working situation, I'm sure like many of yours, has changed. I kind of spend 50% here in the studio, which is at home. I obviously shoot the videos here. More often than not, I edit the videos here. But then I spend some time in my office as well. So I decided I was going to break with the tradition of my past and I was going to buy something more portable. That's why, or the main reason, that the uh, Mac Studio really didn't tick the boxes for me. If anything, I would have gone for the very base Mac Studio with the same uh, Max chip in that I've got. But I knew that I wanted something that was more portable. Obviously, that too needed the monitor 
which Apple delivered to us with the studio display. So I was thinking now the way I'm going to go is buy a MacBook Pro so that I can be mobile. I can work here at home, take it with me. Then at the, uh, at the office, I will have the studio display and I can then work either with dual monitors with the MacBook Pro, of course, to one side and the studio monitor, or I can just put the MacBook Pro into clamshell mode and work just on the studio display. Now, I know the studio display has been met with a lot of very mixed and fairly negative reaction, actually, but that doesn't worry me because I'm not going to be using the camera hardly at all. The speakers don't worry me. I've got studio monitors both here and at the office, and also at the office, I've got a HomePod Mini. So I really am not too worried about the camera situation or the speaker situation. It's the 5K resolution that I wanted and a 27-inch display, which, of course, that's going to give me. So I've kind of got the perfect display, and now I've got the portability. Now, these are eye-wateringly expensive machines. I want to make the right choice, and this Mac is going to last me, hopefully, another five or six years, just like the iMac has. So the whole idea was, when buying this Mac, was to choose something with plenty of headroom. What I didn't want to do was to save just a little bit of money now and then regret it for months and years to come. So the whole idea was to make something that was fairly future-proof. So onto the storage, I decided that for me, two terabytes would be the way to go. It should be more than enough. The 27-inch here has only got one terabyte of storage on it. And after six years of use, it's only around about half full. I'm really good at archiving any uh, video footage onto externals and also all of my projects are also saved in Dropbox. I don't store them locally other than the projects that I'm working on at this time. So the storage I'm pretty good on but I wanted to have plenty of room. I didn't want to be looking and thinking I needed to be careful about what I was putting on this machine. It's going to be a workhorse. It's going to be doing a lot of work each and every day. So I thought two terabytes is the way forward. That will future proof it for me. And then also I can put the video projects, say two or three video projects I'm working on and work off the internal SSD, which is going to be quicker than obviously buying any external. So I want to utilize all the speed that I'm buying into. Now, I've never used an M1 machine. So I'm sure that coming from a six-year-old Intel Mac onto brand new, not only Apple Silicon and M1, but also the Mac chip, I am going to be astounded, I hope. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to make the move now and make the move with a real considered choice behind which way I should go. So I've talked about the fact that I've gone with the two terabytes of storage. I went for the 32 gigs of unified memory as well. I took the spec up on that because, again, it's probably more than I need, but I'd rather spend a tiny bit more money now and then have plenty for the future so that I'm not wishing I bought a different kind of spec or a different kind of machine. I'm pretty certain that the machine I've gone for with 32 gigs of unified memory, two terabytes of storage, and the M1 Max chip, not the Pro chip, is going to see me years into the future and hopefully improve my workflow up. So I mentioned workflow a moment ago, and that is where I really needed to speed things up. These videos, which I shoot in 4K, export in H.264, generally end up about 10-minute videos. Once I've finished editing them, they're taking me around about 35 to 40 minutes to export. Bad enough as it is. But then what generally happens, I'll always watch the video back before posting up onto YouTube. I will quite often see something I want to tidy up or just make better. So that means going back into Premiere Pro, re-exporting another 35 to 40 minutes. I've lost an hour of a day just in waiting for videos to export. And I say losing, it genuinely is, because once you're exporting on a machine, all of its resources are going towards exporting that video. You can't really use it for anything else. Now, yes, I have got other Macs I could use, but if that's what I'm sitting in front of, I'd much rather leave that exporting in the background and just get on with other tasks. Of course, on the M1 Max with a dedicated H.264 media encoders, I'm expecting to see a massive improvement, hopefully maybe as low as five, six, seven minutes. I reckon it's going to be eye-wateringly fast. Coming from a six-year-old Intel to a brand new M1 Mac Max, I'm sure I'm going to notice massive, massive improvements. And to save that amount of time is going to be a huge improvement to my daily workflow. Not only do I use Premiere Pro for video editing, but I also most days am using Photoshop and InDesign. And since the last OS on Mac, I've noticed a deterioration in Creative Cloud apps working with Intel. I don't know if it's just me, but they become slower and a lot more glitchy. I've got a feeling that Adobe are now switching their attention over to Apple Silicon. Clearly, that's going to be the future. So I can't wait to use all of the Creative Cloud apps on Apple Silicon. And I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on this M1 Max and just seeing how much it improves my workflow. So as I say, the machine I've got coming is the 16-inch in silver, what it's worth, 32 gigs of unified memory, two terabytes of storage with the M1 Max chip. Not a cheap machine, but it is being used daily and heavily. So I'm going to get value for money out of it. And I'm pretty happy with the choice that I've made 
are going to see me through into the future with the kind of work that I do. So over the last two or three weeks, I got pretty serious knowing that I was going to make this purchase. I'd been through the specs. I was happy with the decision that I'd made on the machine that I was going to buy. And of course, the other thing is with the machine that I've chosen with the MacBook Pro, the 16 inch has got that 120 hertz refresh rate screen. It's true motion. It's going to have beautiful color replication. So editing video, working in Photoshop is going to be a joy. And it is a better screen than the studio display that I've ordered as well. I've only bought the studio display for that larger real estate. I'm hoping it's going to be every bit as good as a 27-inch iMac that I've got here. And if that is, that's fine. But working on the 16-inch, as long as I get used to working on a smaller screen, and I intend to do all of the video editing probably on the 16-inch display, I think most of the time. We'll see how that goes. But I'm happy with the decision that I've made. I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm never easy at spending that amount of money. It's been a lot of money to spend. but it is for my business, it is for this channel. So it's going to get a lot of use and it's going to see me through, I hope, the next five or six years, just like my trusted 27-inch iMac behind me. So I'm happy with the choices that I've made. I know that it's going to do the work easily that I can throw at it, probably with loads of headroom on it, but that's good. That's exactly how I wanted it because, you know, now I'm editing video. There's every reason to expect that that video work could increase. I could use more plugins. I could use more effects. So to have that headroom there is something I'm happy with. The only thing that's annoying is I've got a bit of a wait. Uh, as of this video that I'm recording now, I've got about a month to wait for the MacBook Pro to turn up and about two months or just under for the studio display to turn up. But if there's going to be a delay, I'd rather it be that way around. I'd rather get the Mac in first, begin loading it up, and then it's going to be a simple case of plug and play when the studio display comes along. But something I'd like you to help me on, best way of setting a Mac up, as you know, you can just open up the Mac, certainly the last time I did it, and it says, do you want to set up from another Mac? Should I do that or should I set it up as a brand new Mac? Let me know in the comments below what you do and what you think I should do. Also, let me know if you'd like me to film the unboxing of it. I know they're not new machines. They've been out for six months now, roughly. But if you would want me to show you the unboxing and how it all works, then let me know in the comments below and I'd love to do it. So it's going to be a little wait, but I am looking forward to get my hands in just improving my day-to-day -day workflow. So if you're thinking of buying a Mac, I'd love to know what choices you're making and has this video helped you? I really hope it has. I've spent so long going through the choices of what I think the right Mac would be for my business and for this channel. I'm sure I've made the right decision. What do you think? Have I gone the right route? I think the mixture of being able to be portable and then also with the studio display that I've got a full-blown office setup when I need it, but I'm going to be editing on a 16-inch display. And I've never worked on a 16-inch display before. So I think I'll probably be surprised how big that seems to work on if I do need to work just on a MacBook Pro, but I'd love to know what you think. I really do hope that this video has helped you make some choices and just gone through the, the quagmire, gone through the, all the choices that are out there. We've got so much now. And don't forget the M1 chip in its base form in the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air is still one hell of a chip. And that probably would have done me. I've got a feeling I might have outgrown it. Certainly the eight gigs of unified memory that comes on some of the basic machines, I think I might have been getting to the limits of that fairly quickly. So with 32 on board, I'm more than happy that's gonna see me through. But if you're looking to get a machine for video editing, for heavy graphic design work, let me know what choices you're making and if this video has helped you as well. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, get subscribed, leave me a like, help this channel grow and share the videos out as well. And with that, all I can say is thank you very much for joining me on this one and I will see you on the next video, which will be more Apple Views.